Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn about basics of lists in data structures and how they are represented in memory. So there are two ways of representing the lists in memory. The first one is array representation. The second one is linked representation. So now let's understand this with the help of the given example where we have some uh, planets of the solar system that we need to arrange in ascending order from A to Z. Now these are the given eight planets of the solar system and we need to arrange them both with the help of array representation and linked list representation. So in case of array representation, array is basically stored in stack memory and addresses in array are in contiguous location that we will understand now with the help of the example. Now I have defined an array where the data type is care name of the array is a and there are eight rows and eight columns right so now let's understand this example so here this is your first row this is your second row this is your third row and similarly this is the last row so let's say the base address that i have given to the first location is thousand and if i talk about turbo c compiler their characters takes one byte right so because we have eight columns here so similarly like one, first row second row and eighth row here the number of columns will be first second till eight so these are the eight columns so one byte for every column then it the whole is taking eight bytes right so thousand plus eight will be the next address which is pointing to the next so basically 2d array is a collection of 1d is in and every row will be storing one planet name and because the planets are stored in string that is why we have taken the data type character right so earth comes first if we arrange all the planets in ascending order so what will happen is here earth will come and because for every character one byte is stored so e will be represented here then we have r t h in this way every cell we are representing the planet next is jupiter so similarly we will be representing jupiter and i have taken uh, this range so that uh, the space is not wasted because exactly eight planets are there so i have taken eight rows and i have taken eight columns so that uh, the maximum uh, size length of the cap uh, size length of the planet can be acquired in the uh, columns right so in this way we will arrange all the planets in ascending order and they can be stored with the help of the 2d matrix right and every cell will be having a different address and we will calculate it by add in every cell we will be adding 1000 plus 8 will give you the next address 1008 again in 1008 you are adding 8 you are getting the next address in this way every time you will be adding 8 bytes to this so that we get the next address now let's better understand it with the help of the representation so we have the first address at thousand so here we are storing earth right it starts with e then the next planet is j that is jupiter uh, again thousand plus eight is 1008 and jupiter is stored at this particular address then we have mars thousand eight plus eight is 1016 and and here I am storing Mars and then we have Mercury both are starting with M but A comes first as, a, as compared to E because M are equal but A and E A comes before E so Mars is stored before Mercury similarly every time we are adding 8 bytes or you can say 8 to the address and we are getting the next address right so in this way, we will store all the particular, then M, then N, then S, and then U, and then Venus. In this way, we have arranged all the planets in alphabetic order from A to Z. And here, addresses are in contiguous memory location. So this is the specialty of your array. And we can see this and visualize it with this help, uh, with this example. And your uh, array is created in stack memory. Now let's understand the linked list representation. Here, the linked list is basically created in heap memory. And what is a linked list? It is a sequence of connected nodes such that each node contains a reference which contains the address of the next node. Now let's understand it with the help of the example. 
uh, so this is the given node right and it consists of two part first part is your information part that stores the data or element or value that you want to enter or store so this information part will store the data and then we have the next part which is going to store the address of the next node right so here we will be having one more node and if there is another node then this node will be storing the address of the next node that i will explain in the next slide so in a node we have two parts first is information and next is the other part is next which stores the address and there is an external reference that points to the starting node let's understand this so i have created a node and this is the address of the node so in the information part i will store some data and in the next part because this is the only node available in the link list so there is no node which it is pointing so there is no node to point so that is why here it is it will not store any address and it will be pointing to null that it, it means it is not pointing to any other node and as i have discussed we have start or head which stores the address of this node because this is the only node so this will be the first node and address will be stored by a pointer that is start here it will be storing this particular address which is stored in this particular pointer right it will be assigned this address so every link list there will be a start or head pointer which will be storing the address of the first node and again the first node will be storing the address of the next node in this way they will be connected and null will be stored in the next of the last node now let's understand again with the help of example now here if you see this is the first node and this is the address of the first node and we have a start pointer which will store the address of the first node so it is being stored here then because we have sorted the planets in ascending order from a to z alphabetic order so earth will come first and then we have another node this is the next node or you can also call it as the last node and it also has some address right so because as i have told you this node will store the address of the next node so in the next part of this node this address will be stored so you can see that this 2000 is the address of this node which is stored in the first node next right and now they are connected because with the help of this address we can directly traverse to this node wherever it is located in memory it is not a big concern for us because with the help of this address location we can directly reach there and you can also see that the addresses here are non contiguous why see the first node is stored at this location a uh, 1000 location and this x is basically representing address it to point out addresses we represent x axis as hexadecimal and then the next address is 2000 so if we have a memory it may happen that all the locations are not free right so we have different locations in memory so let's say this is the free location and here the address is 1000 right this is the outer zone location and similarly i have another location in the memory which is also free and this is location 2000 so it is not continuous in nature in between 1000 and 2000 there will be so many addresses available right but because this is the next free location so i have stored the next node here at this location so they are not contiguous in this way you can understand the context and then because we know that after earth jupiter will come so jupiter is stored in the next node again this is the last node but in this case this is not going to be the last node if i talk about these two nodes this is your last node so it will be pointing to null but as we have seen in the previous example after jupiter we have mars so it will be pointing to the address of the next node that is mars similarly mars will be pointing to uh, another node which will be having mercury and in this way all the nodes will be stored so this is the first node second node third node fourth node and let's say this is the last node in this way they are connected and then the last node that is venus here in venus we will be storing null because this is the last node of the link list and here we will be storing null it means that the last node node is not pointing to any other node so in this way we are basically storing uh, the planet names with the help of single link list in this way first earth then jupiter mars mercury neptune saturn uranus and venus all are arranged in 
sorted list so this is a sorted list all are arranged in alphabetic order so this is how it is being represented so the question is why do we need linked list when we already can store the elements in array because we have seen that we can represent uh, the planet names both with the help of array and also with the help of linked list but why then linked list when we can easily implement implement it through array now let's understand this when i am given this particular array in this case what is happening is if let's say this is a 1d array and in this case the size is already fixed at compile time so when uh, this program is given to the user the user can enter any number of elements in case if the user is entering the value of n greater than 20 and the user wants to add more elements but we have defined the size as 20 so no more elements can be inserted into the array similarly if the uh, let's say there are the size is 20 but the elements that the user has inserted is let's say only 5 which is less than 20 so out of 20 cells only 5 cells have been occupied in the array and rest of the 15 are being wasted so here if we have store very less elements then the memory is wasted and when we need to store more elements then this is not sufficient this particular size is not sufficient for us so in this case what happens is size of array is fixed at compile time and it cannot be expanded like in this case we want to expand the memory but it cannot be expanded or it cannot be shrink as in this case the memory is getting wasted so both are a loss to us but if i talk about insertion and deletion insertion and deletion also is very difficult in case of array because when you have to insert some element into the array so all the elements are being inserted right till now we have inserted all the elements and i need to uh, add one element over here so if i need to add some element here i need to shift all the elements to the right and then a space will be created for this element and similarly when i have to delete this element so a space will be created here and to fill that space all the elements will be shifted to the left so when we are adding the elements we are shifting the elements to the right and when we are adding an element in between we have to shift the elements to the left because in array all the elements are placed at contiguous location that is why we cannot keep an empty cell in the array that is the reason here in array insertion and deletion is also very difficult and it takes lot of time and also the array cannot be expanded or even it cannot be shrink so now let's understand array and linked list with real life illustration in this particular case let's say your friend has gifted to you this bangle and he does not know the size of your hand so in that case if he has brought a bangle which is smaller in size as compared to your hand so it will not fit into your hand and if uh, your friend has brought a bangle for you which is bigger in size as compared to your hand this will be loose in your hand again you cannot wear it right both the cases are not suitable for you because the size is fixed but if i talk about this particular example here let's say again your friend uh, gifted you this wrist watch and this is uh, very loose in your hand so in that case we can remove these extra strips according to the size uh, width of your wrist right and if it, if it is very tight to on your hand then the shopkeeper can add extra can provide you extra strips that we can add into it so that it can it can uh, the length of this wrist watch can be increased so in that way in both the cases here the wrist watch length can be shrink or it can be uh, expanded both are possible so now you can very well relate this resembles your array because this size is fixed and this resembles your linked list because they are basically representing your nodes only right we can add extra nodes or you can say strips into this watch and also we can remove uh, the extra strips so which one is better this is the question array is better or linked list is better two comparisons we have already done that uh, lin linked list in insertion and deletion in linked list is better as compared to array it takes lesser time and also here we can expand or shrink the size in linked list so in if i talk about these two parameter linked list is better than array but there are some cases where array is better than linked list so we cannot say that array is always better than linked list or linked list is always better then array it depends on the size of the data the circumstances and the elements and everything that we will be discussing in the coming video where we will be uh, understanding all the basic param uh, 
circumstances where array will be better or linked list will not be and where array will not be better and array linked list will be performing better so we will um, understand that in the next video i hope you understood the concept of a list then stay tuned to my lecture and wait for my next video thank you